Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Today we are gonna to be talking about LED lighting and specifically LED lighting for your off-road vehicles, whether that's your four-wheeler, your side-by-side, -side, maybe a boat or some other application, maybe even like a Jeep or a truck. So recently Nightlight reached out to me and they had seen an old video of mine where I was installing some navigation lights on my original budget boat and they asked me if I'd be willing to install some of their lights on that boat. Unfortunately, Last year I sold that boat and bought a new to me boat and uh, I also have a four wheeler. So I asked uh, Nylight if they'd be willing to send lights for both of those vehicles and they agreed. So let's start by talking about the four wheeler. Uh, it's a 1996 and I'm gonna leave a link right up here in the corner that is a video that shows and tells you how I bought that four wheeler for a really great price. But it's a 1996 and the factory lighting on it is pretty abysmal. And so, for the entire five years that I've owned that four-wheeler, I've really been wanting to do an upgrade like this, but for whatever reason, it's just one of those things I never got around to doing. So I'm super, super excited to have this opportunity. So the light that they sent me for the four-wheeler is just 20-inch light bar. This light bar is a triple row light bar, which means that there are three rows of LEDs in it. And some of them are spot and some of them are flood. So you're gonna get a really nice wide flood pattern as well as a more uh, far-reaching spot pattern as well. I think it's a, a 420 watt light bar, if I remember correctly, rated for something like 42,000 lumens. And the kit that I got came with all of the wiring, which has includes a, um, a relay, it comes with a switch, it comes with a fuse holder, and all of the wiring that you're going to need. And the wire harness plus the light, I think ran me uh, something less than $50 is about what this is going to run. Now, I also asked them to send me a mounting kit, which is sold separately, but this little mounting kit right here is going to keep me from having to drill through any of the frame of my four-wheeler, and I'm actually going to uh, put this uh, little mounting bracket here right onto one of the racks of my four-wheeler and mount this light bar right to my four-wheeler without doing any drilling, which I'm really excited about. I think this is about a $10 kit, and it comes with different grommets that fit various size uh, racks and different metal tubing. Now on the other side, they also sent me some lights for my boat. Now this particular kit, because my boat's pretty much wired up, all I need to do is pretty much just exchange one light for another. Uh, I didn't get the kit with the wiring harness and this set of two six or six and a half inch uh, light bars, I think was somewhere around that $25 mark. I'm gonna leave links down in the description for these particular lights as well as Nylight's Amazon store. Now these six and a half inch lights are also triple row LED light bars, which means that they have a spot and a flood pattern both. And I think these are rated, if I remember correctly, at 120 watts. Now, this is probably not going to be as much light as I wish I had when I'm out on a big lake out over open water. But unfortunately, I just don't have a lot of room up in the front of my boat. I've already got an anchor system and some other things up there. And so I'm just going to be taking a three inch light bar off of my boat and adding this six and a half inch light bar. In fact, I'm probably only gonna put one because of space and I'm probably gonna save the other one for another project down the road. So with all of that said, I'm really excited. Let's go outside, let's get these things installed. I'm gonna show you how I install them on the boat and on the four wheeler. And then I'm gonna show you some before and after of the difference that these lights actually make on these two vehicles. All right, so what I wanna do next is I wanna show you how I'm gonna install this LED light bar on my four-wheeler. Now, as I've already mentioned, the boat install is gonna be super easy. There's already a switch and wiring in place to where all I'm really gonna do is disconnect the wiring, take the old light off, put the new light on, and reconnect the wiring. It's gonna be super simple. There's really not much to show you. However, the four-wheeler is gonna be a little bit more complex install, and so I want to walk you through it. And I've already spent some time figuring out exactly how I'm gonna do it, where the wiring needs to go. So I'm gonna explain it before I do it, and then we're gonna start putting this all together. Now, the LED light bar, you can buy this separately. So if you've already got a switch and wiring in place, maybe you're replacing a, a, an old light, like I am on the boat, then you can just get the light on its own. The kit that I got comes with an included wiring harness. And so I wanna walk you through the different components of the wiring harness. On one end, you're gonna have these two different sets of red and black wires. Now, if you follow them back, you're gonna see all they are is they're just spliced together. And all that this is for is this goes to your lighting. And this is so that you can have more than one light. Now, in my particular case, at this point in time, I'm only planning to use this one LED light bar. Um, and so I'm just gonna cover up the other ends, try to keep the dirt and moisture out of them. But 
uh, I am going to use the one set for my LED light bar. Now, you follow it back, and you're going to get to basically a big cluster of different wires coming out of this relay, and I'll address that more in just a moment. But what I want to show you next is this other long wire here. It comes out. This is separate from your the, the wires that go to your lights, and this has a switch. This is a really nice little uh, switch. has a little waterproof seal around it, and it's lighted. So when your lights are on, you're going to have a little lit up switch here, little red light inside. Now, the really easy way for me to install this on my four-wheeler would be to take my main red and black leads for the main power, hook them up to my battery, find a place for my switch, hook the other into the lights, and I'm good to go, right? Pretty easy. Most of these connections even are already pre-set up with connectors where you just hook them together. Super, super simple. Except there's one big holdup for me, and that is if I hook it up that way, that the lights would be able to be powered even when the key is off on the four-wheeler. I really want the lights just to go off with the key. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is that I actually want to remove this switch and I actually want to be able to operate the lights from the main uh, original factory light switch that, that is high and low as well as on and off from my, uh, my factory switches here. And then there's one more thing that I want to do and that is I want to have the ability to switch between factory lights and my LED light. So what I've noticed is that my factory lights on low beams, they are not very bright, but they do light up the road in front of me. High beams, however, they're brighter, but they seem to be angled the wrong position and just seem to be very, very ineffective. So what I actually want to do is I actually want to disconnect the high beams and connect the LED light into the high beam circuit. Now what that will do for me is it will allow me if I'm in a situation where maybe the LED light is too bright, maybe there's other people around, or maybe I just want to be a little bit more discreet, or whatever the case may be, I can switch between the LED light, which is going to be wired into my high beam circuit, and the factory lights on low beam, which will be on the low beam circuit. And I'll be able to do all of that from my factory switch panel. So how am I going to do that? Well, you might be thinking I could just find the power wire for the high beams and wire it in. And that may be true, but I don't know whether the wiring circuit for the high beams is going to be sufficient to handle this super, super bright light. But fortunately, this system is already set up to handle that problem. So on this end, you have a relay. And basically, you've got these power wires. What is a relay? Well, I'm not really good at explaining it. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to a short video that I think explains it in a pretty simple and easy way. But basically, it's an electronically activated switch. So essentially, this is a switch that's going to turn on my light with a direct feed from the battery. However, I can get power basically through this switch. And whenever there's power through the white wire of the switch, it's going to send power to this relay and it's going to send power to the light. It's basically going to turn on or off the switch and turn on or off the lights. So what that means is I can connect this white wire to the high beam circuit of my four-wheeler and when the high beams turn on it will send power to the relay which will send power to the lights but not through the high beam circuit direct from the battery. So it's a really perfect setup and Nylite actually has a really great setup here and easy already set up. You don't have to go buy a uh, relay, it's already included in the kit. So I think it's time to actually go ahead and install the LED light on the front and that way we can start connecting everything. So as I mentioned before, I've got this mounting bracket and these are sold separately. If I remember correctly, it's about $10 for a set of two. And you can either use them with none of the grommets. So this is gonna be your, your largest size mounting bracket for the largest size uh, tubing. Or you can get a, a thin, grommet or a thicker grommet and it comes with all of these different grommets and you find the one that fits your rack the best. And so I'm going to mount mine right here on this tube so that way the light will sit just above the old headlights. And if I remember correctly from my testing it should be the middle size bracket or the middle size grommet there it's going to fit this bracket pretty nicely. Yep, I think that's it. And so we're just gonna put those on here loosely. We're not gonna tighten them down until we actually get the light attached and everything's in place and we know how we want them to be positioned. There is a groove along the bottom and there's captured nuts in that groove that slide back and forth. So the spacing of these is not perfectly critical. Like you don't have to worry about that too much. Just put them where you think they're gonna look good and then line up these bolts, put a nut up through, or excuse me, line up these nuts and put a bolt up through and uh, attach your light that way. So I'm gonna get that done right now.
I just ran into a big problem. So right after I told you I had this thing mounted, I realized it was way off centered, which should be an easy fix by just loosening the bolts and sliding it down on the bracket. Unfortunately, this nut, when I went to tight it, tighten it down the first time, actually turned sideways and is now stuck in place. So now it's gonna be almost impossible for me to center this unless I can get this nut to actually turn and slide in the groove as it's supposed to. So I don't know if the channel is just not milled to the correct size or if maybe the metal's too soft and so it just bites in. But either way, I think that is a little bit of a design flaw with this light. Well, fortunately, I was able to take a screwdriver in there and tap it and pound it a little bit and it did turn back into the way it was supposed to go. So I'm gonna try a second time to get this mounted and this time I'm gonna make sure it's centered before I tighten down those bolts. All right, so now that we have our light mounted the way we want to, it's really just a matter of connecting these two ends. Now, the end from the wiring harness has connectors pre-connected. The other end, it comes with the connectors and you just have to crimp them on. And then it's really simple. Make sure you get your red and your black lined up with the right ones. Push them together and slide these sleeves into place. Then we'll do our black. Snap it together. You can hear it click and slide the two sleeves together so that it seals up over that connection. Next up, let's take care of wiring in our LED light bar to our high beam switch. Under my four wheeler here, I have three factory wires for the headlights. One is white, one is green, and one is blue. The green is your ground, white is power to your low beams, and the blue is power to your high beams, and the blue is the one that we want. On the other side here, we have our Nylite harness, and this is where the switch used to be. We've removed the switch from the harness, and right now we don't care about the red or the black. What we care about is this white wire. And the white wire is the one that sends a power signal to the relay to basically turn on your lights. So if I wire this, this white wire from my Nylite harness to the Honda wire, which is blue, when I turn on my high beams, it's going to send power through this white wire to the relay, which will then turn on my high beams or really turn on my LED light bar, which is exactly what I want. Now, unfortunately, these two aren't going to plug in together. That's not going to work. But I do have this connector here, happen to have it on hand, and this is going to fit my factory harness on the Honda. All right, so with our switch connection made, the only thing left to do is hook our red and black wires directly to our battery. Now, something I should have mentioned earlier is the Nylite harness does come with a built-in fuse holder. In the process of testing, I did happen to touch the wrong two wires together and blew the fuse. So I've got the fuse out until I get everything set and then I'm gonna put the fuse back in. So let's get these wires connected. All right, so all my wiring is complete. Let's check it all out to make sure it works. I'm gonna turn the key to the four-wheeler first. I don't have any headlights because my headlight switch is not on. First of all, there's an on-off switch. Turn that on and you should be able to see I get my factory low beams. Now over here, I also have a high-low switch. Turn it to high. Boom, there is my LED light bar just the way I wanted it back to factory low beams. But I also wanted to show you that if, with my LED bar on, if I turn the key, they're off, which is exactly what I wanted. I want to be able to turn the key off and have the light go off. No worries if I left it on. Now, the only thing that's left to do is clean up all my wiring and we are good to go. Next up, let's install the boat light. All right, so now that we've got the lights installed on both the boat and the four-wheeler, I want to show you the before and after footage so that you can see how much of a difference these Nylite lights have actually made on my vehicles. But before I show you those clips, I want to explain something to you about how I'm going to show you these clips. So a lot of videos that I've seen in the past where they're comparing two different sets of lights, it's very difficult to actually tell the difference. And there's one major reason for that, and it's because a camera is always going to try to find what it thinks is a proper exposure, and it's going to adjust for that. And so if you start out with a, a really dim light, the camera is going to try to raise the exposure of the image to make it look fairly well lit and a proper exposure. Now, if you turn on 10 more lights or you turn on a much brighter light, the camera is going to reduce that exposure to try to keep everything evened out. But what that does is it makes really bright lights and really dim lights tend to actually look kind of the same. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my camera to a manual exposure and lock it down so the camera is not able to move the exposure one way or the other. And then we're going to film one set of lights and then we're going to turn on the other set of lights. And because that camera isn't going to make any adjustment, you're actually going to be able to see the difference in the two sets of lights in a really accurate way. So with all of that said, let's take a look at the difference between the old lights and the new lights on my boat and my four-wheeler. All right, here we are with my four-wheeler. These are the factory headlights. These are on low beams, and these are high beams. 
And now let's turn on the LED light bar. Now, as you can see, that is an absolutely massive difference. And not only is it brighter right in the middle, you can also see the effects of that flood pattern built into the light bar as well. Look how much brighter it is out on the edge here. Over here, you can see my 3D target that my wife is using by her garden. You can see how bright that is. I'm gonna go back real quick to the factory headlights just so you can see the difference of how dark that is. And then back here onto the LED light bar again. It is an absolute massive difference, really no comparison at all. Now, let's take our new lights out for a ride. All right, here we are on a trail ride on my four-wheeler, and I'm using my factory headlights, obviously on low beams. And what you can see is that, really, I can only see at about 20 or 30 yards in front of me. It's well lit right in front of me, but it fades off really quickly past 20 or 30 yards. Now let's click on that high beam LED light bar. And boom, what a massive difference. That 20 or 30 yards is now lit up like daylight in front of the four-wheeler, and I can now see probably 100 or more yards down the trail, if the trail's straight. It just lit up with way less shadows, way clearer, and way easier to see out in front of me. But I also noticed that that flood pattern lights up the side of the trail really, really well, almost 180 degree light pattern here. And it is just so nice to ride down the trail with that amount of light. All right, we're back at the house now and I wanna take a look at the lights on the boat. And what you're seeing here is the three inch light pod that was my original light on the boat. And what I want you to notice is it's really lighting up the front of that shed with a very concentrated light. And it's even lighting up some trees that are back beyond my shed. But if you notice on the left-hand side of the image, it fades off super fast into really darkness over by those trees. And even the side of the house is lit up, but not super, super bright. Even the grass in front of the boat is not super, super bright, although it is well lit. Now, when I switch over to the six and a half inch light bar, you can see how much brighter that grass is here in the front of the image, right in front of the boat. You can also see how much brighter the house is as well as over on the left-hand side where my daughter's playhouse is. And so what you're gonna see is that the flood pattern that this uh, six and a half inch light bar includes really lights up close in front of the boat really nicely and spreads light quite a bit wider than what the original spotlight did. But if you look out at the front of the shed, what I think you'll notice is that while the shed is lit up pretty well, it doesn't have that concentrated spot that my original three inch pod did. My concern about that is that I'm not sure that I'm gonna get the distance of light that I would have out of a dedicated spotlight. But I can tell you that I really do like having this flood pattern as a part of the light that really is gonna light up things beside the boat and in front of the boat really, really nicely. Well guys, I have to tell you, there is a huge difference, especially on the four-wheeler where we went from non-LED lighting to this really nice 20-inch light bar. But I'm enjoying these nylight light lights on both vehicles. Again, they're not incredibly expensive. I feel like they are fairly affordable. If you're interested in picking some up for whatever your needs are, I'm gonna leave some links down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. And until next time, Remember, get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.